So welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews. And I'm very excited for Hospital Radio, um, for Hospital Radio and of course for my YouTube channel. My guest today is a very funny man, but he's also very good at tugging at the heartstrings. It's the very funny John Thompson. Thank you for joining me. That's all right. Hello. Good morning. Now, obviously, life at the moment is very strange. How are you finding mm. lockdown? How have you been coping with it? Well, I've been absolutely fine because it's just like being an out-of-work actor. This is the no different to being unemployed uh, in um, if you work in the arts. So um, I have I have to sympathise with people who do a nine-to-five kind of office-based job because um those jobs for some people are their social life and their mates are at work whereas i kind of get together occasionally with mates who are uh, particularly on cold feet who i've known for years and then we break up and it's like going to school really you know you break up for the summer and then you come back and film so yeah i do sympathize with people um with that but to be honest i'm quite resilient uh, i'm divorced i live alone and i have my kids when We've kind of like, it was every other weekend and Monday, so we, I've kind of had them more, and I've seen more of my kids, so that's been great. So I've seen more of my kids. It's a bit like being unemployed. However, I did make the mistake of, to try and bring myself really good karma and polish my halo, Respond, I thought, to keep myself busy and occupied, um, what I would do is I would accept every request that was sent my way, absolutely everything. And it wore me down in the end because <laughs> it's just so hard to kind of stay on track. I mean, poor Matt Lucas, he just had to say, that's it now. No more baked potato. I, that's, that's, I've reached my limit. And I understand that. I understand that completely because I was just doing books, reading books and badges. And, and it just got too much. I wasn't really doing a, a great deal for myself. And then my life changed when I went to the cardboard bin and found a box called Ring Fit Adventure for the Nintendo Switch. And um, I've been walking a bit, but not, not breaking a sweat. And someone said, I heard someone say, At, in lockdown, you come out as a chunk, a hunk, or a drunk. Well, I don't drink, and I haven't drunk for this Christmas 14 years. So that, for me is a very easy way of coping with lockdown because I know for a fact there's been a lot of people kind of dealing with it. In a, whereas alcohol's become a very special medicine for people most nights and days, I think. <laughs> uh, so I, 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 um, I do worry about the, the epidemic of, of alcohol in this country and, and that strange kind of excitement that the pubs would open. I just thought, I haven't had enough at home. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I mean, I'm not lecturing, but it's not good, really. It won't it won't do you any good? So, I, on top of not drinking, I decided to have a go at this ring fit. I bet it's not an you know endorsement. I didn't get it for free. I, they're like hen's teeth; you can't get them anywhere. Uh, but I saw this box and I went, "Oh, I've never heard of that." Because I've heard of the wee fits on the old system. Well, I do it every day now, and I'm on day. What day am I on now? I think I'm on day 48 solid every day. I train for at least 20 minutes, but it's proper exercise. But the difference is you're in a monster kind of Zelda um, uh, setting where you've got to beat bosses by doing, uh, you know, um, the tree pose. And <laughs> so it's yoga, arms, it's the whole body. It's very well thought out. And do you know what? I love doing it. If I, if I go to, I don't really like the gym but I do like this and I'm at home and no one can stare at me and I can just get on with it. And, uh, I love it. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I really love it. So I do it daily. I suppose I've swapped my alcohol addiction for, <laughs> for, for switch for an Nintendo switch ring fit adventure, but I love it. I mean, I love it so much. I've actually started going on Reddit and, uh, found fandom to see what other people's tips are. So I'm very excited this morning. I opened a thing where I can make a smoothie, but it's wow. a virtual smoothie. <laughs> but that makes you stronger to fight the monsters. So it's all, it's, I mean, that's helped massive, especially well-being wise. It's lifted my spirits to know that I am breaking a sweat daily. And when the weather was really good, it's like, it's gone a bit amiss now, but we're, count our blessings. We have had a, we have had amazing weather earlier in the year. Um, 
I used to, I was also doing a three to five K walk on top of that in the morning and, and just felt great. Just felt great. So I mean, it's, so, it's so good for your mental health to, to, to do things because it's so easy to fall into that, that sort of, you know, way of just doing nothing and just sitting about all day. And, and it, so it's good to get out and, and do things or, you know, like you, you know, even if you're just, you know, on the games and everything, because, you know, exactly. you're moving about. I think the fact that it's a game and it's a fitness game is brilliant because like just sitting playing games, you know, uh, is it's sedentary and you're gonna you're gonna put the pounds on i mean i was snacking as well a lot i still do a bit but there's a bit of a deficit going on with the exercise but it's just so easy to fall into bad habits but you better make it you better finding good habits and maintaining them swapping them over really i mean as, as opposed to as, as far as netflix i think i think we're sport rotten with tiger king and <laughs> nothing's really matched it since really it that started at the beginning it was an obsession worldwide wasn't it but it was such an unusual documentary and such a, you know, they've hit gold, the, the documentary makers, because it was really two documentaries in one. It kind of like, it was a right, it was a, someone passed the torch, it fell apart and then, oh, you take this thing over. You know? <laughs> it was an amazing bit of film, you know, as, as a, I've never seen that before, where an abandoned documentary becomes something else. And, um, wow, yes, that was like, it's, it's not been beaten. But my guilty pleasure is, and you won't believe this, my daughters, uh, um, Sophia, who is 10, and Olivia is 17, uh, are huge RuPaul drag oh, race okay. fans. And uh, so am I. They've, <laughs> they started me off on it, and I absolutely love it. I, um, it's a gr- uh, it's, it, so we're currently on, uh, we're currently on All Stars. <laughs> but we did watch the, the last season's uh, lockdown finale as well. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, and a bit of bread. I actually, right at the end of the kind of when the lockdown was eased, I had a go at sourdough. I didn't make <laughs> banana bread, and it wore, it worked. It did work. It worked fine. It was a bit flat. It was from proper book. It was a bit flat, but it would air, it, it aerated too. But it took a week to make. It takes a week to make the starter. Oh, sorry, my tummy's wrong now. I've had no bread. <laughs> I was like the rolling thunder. Um, so I've done a few. Th- I like doing kind of practical things, and my my ten year old's very crafty, so she, I love getting doing, getting involved with her. I mean, I found, honest, myself, uh, I found myself doing banana loaf, so I think we between the two of us, we've done it all. Really, was it heavy? It, very heavy. Uh, it's a very I, heavy I, cake. It was quite heavy, but it was really nice as well. I, I mean, nice. The the, the, People, the the riper the bananas, the better the loaf. I think. Indeed, uh, correct. That's right because of the sugar content. Because you'll find that diabetics aren't allowed uh, mm. bananas with black black on the skin because the sugar the sugar's too high. So, but when you're making cakes. More is more. And also the other thing I did, you know, another tangent, uh, found myself doing chocolate and beetroot cake, which was something else that I'd never had before and was well, actually f- really nice. I'll bet, because the colouring for red velvet is beetroot, of course. Yeah. That's if people don't know, because I'm like <laughs> a big foodie. I cook all the time. So that's another thing I've been doing. I've been cooking all kinds of things, you know. I've been doing quite a few restaurant re- recreations when they were all shut. So I can do quite a few things from Waggers, even Katsu Korea can make that. Because I've got the book, it's, it's not like it's secret, you know. <laughs> uh, we've, done, we've done fried chicken. Uh, I've done, uh, what else have I done? I've done Waggers, I've done KFC, what else have I done? Um, oh, still done. oh yeah, made me on Big Macs. And sauce, everything. I was going to say, because yeah. there was a lot of people that were doing all that at one point, when yeah. obviously they were closed. Um, the buns are very hard to come by because they're not brioche, really. Mm. So the best brioche buns are like kind of Aldi and, and what you, the, the, the tips to buy is to, to use another bottom because it's three, three tier, isn't it? Like a scrub <laughs> sandwich. So you just stick another bottom in the middle. And I find, but brioche is a bit sweeter than the, one, the ones they use in the, in the thing. To find those kind, to find that bread that they use <laughs> for Big Macs is very hard. It's the, it, that's the that's tough, very tough. Now, I just wanted to say, I mean, in terms of um, work for you, obviously, I mean, for a lot of people, work just stopped. I mean, were you in the middle yeah. of any projects when when lockdown well, came? As I speak to you, um, just before lockdown, I was starting to realise how serious it was, and I thought, my God, I am not going to have any work at all so i am on a rolling contract with uh, police interceptors for channel five where i nar- narrate the show and have been for about probably best part of five maybe six years now so i'm the voice of police interceptors on channel five amongst others because i tend to do a lot of narratives now because they're like my voice for uh, for for documentaries uh, which is great but it doesn't pay the bills like commercials do <laughs> listening anyone listening out there 
just remember these velvety tones. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I do do a quite a few. So the, th what I did was I kind of guessed a bit, really. I didn't do too much research because of being in, in studio so much. So in front of me, I have a, a garden table from our Ikea that I didn't want anymore, covered in black felt so it doesn't, you know. I have uh, engineer's insulation foam on the walls, a decent mic. Um, I've got, I'm hardwired into the internet here because of the, so it's more of a fixed IP. So basically I've got, it sounds all right to you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sounds perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've got, um, I've got a dead room in my old broom cupboard. So the dimensions in here are seven foot by three, three and a half foot. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> there's no windows. Uh, I share it with the occasional spider, but I'm not frightened. So, I mean, and it's worked so uh, weekly. I do uh, Ultimate Police Interceptors, which is the best of on the Tuesday. And on the Wednesday, I do the actual new series of Police Interceptors, which is this time Nottinghamshire. Because they move the counties, they move around and they follow different police. And there's always different problems. It's, it's interesting what, what, what counties kind of bring up what problems, you know. So we're in Nottinghamshire at the moment. Uh, and uh, so I do that. I will be back on that tomorrow. So it must be yeah, quite exciting to be able to still do something because I mean the my worst, God, yes. Th I mean the, wor God, the, the yes. worst. The worst thing is just to not have anything to do and just kind of yeah, like we were saying earlier, just kind of fall into a bit of a hole and do nothing. Well, so, I don't believe. I, I've always said this. My kids, if they, if my kids want to get in serious trouble, they say the board word. They say <laughs> the, the B word, which is bored. Because when I was a kid, I mean, e when I were a lad, I mean, there's no iPads and and, and all that we were out and about on bikes and stuff, you know? So, I mean, all these kind of like things like stranger things are like, Oh God, there's a lot of bikes. And that's how it was, you know, <laughs> that was fun. And, uh, what was I going to say? The things that you should, no excuses to get bored in this day and age, especially with the technology we have, the resources we have, but also you can learn so much from the resources. It doesn't have to be mindlessly watching crap on you know some platform you can learn i mean like youtube i fixed so many things like am i nutribullet went uh when you press it down and turn one of those teeth that kind of engages the motor sort of jack you know because it gets a bit sticky sometimes so i watched it and i poured boiling hot water on it and got the sticky out and i put some silicone on it and it works now and i was like so chuffed and then i kind of I had a new cooker hood, the old one bust, and I put that in, and it was smaller, slightly smaller than the other one, and the old wallpaper from way back, 1950s, like floral, <laughs> from God knows who was here when that was up. Um, I sanded that down, and I repainted it, and I've done, I've done things that I've always gone, mm, I could do with a bit of plaster. So I've gone a bit of polyfiller, filled holes, and I've done quite a bit of, the, of DIY in the house where I've just gone, and I'm, I can look now and go, it's done, my God. Because in the past, I go, I'll get, you know, there's something about the lockdown's gone. Okay, I need that doing. Because you see it every day, don't yeah. you? I think that's it. Because you're sort of under house arrest to a point. You, you go, oh, God, I've got to get that fixed. Hang on. <laughs> I'll fix it. I'm going to fix it. Yeah. So it's a sense of achievement and a sense of worth, you know. Um, I do feel sorry for people who are infirm and can't leave, you know, the house and, and, Oh, I mean, there's so many, you don't realise you, you what, you, you kind of only know what your own story is, really. And I mean, some of the, I tend not to, at the beginning, I didn't tend to watch the news because it was like too, too alarming, really. It was just, you know, is this really happening? Um, so, but I don't, two things I've always said for a happier life is don't follow sport, which I don't. I don't like it. I don't like any sport. And England aren't particularly good at it. <laughs> uh generally we're not and uh so that's and uh and i don't read a, a newspaper either i don't read a daily paper um no matter what quality it is so um basically by removing those two things um i have two less disappointments in life i mean one thing i must admit that i've uh, sort of taught myself to do which i'd never done before was i'd started cutting my own hair which probably needs another trip yes, soon that looks but, all right but but yeah clipper, I was, clipper job is exactly yeah so clippers and scissors um yeah which, i did it once Took me an hour and a half because I was petrified to make the first cut. But once I got going, it, it actually wasn't too bad. No, I know. Well, that's the, the big gun. There will be a few pit trades that that will suffer at the hands of our uh, kind of uh, what stoicism, uh, kind of like, you know, practicality of picking up things. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I still I went out quite a bit, you know, in the in the lockdown, and and, and still it wasn't like we were literally locked down. There was, you know, I I I, I, I would one thing I've always said is get out of the house every day if you can. If you can leave the house, no matter what for what, if it's shopping or just walking or anything, that's there for you, and it always has been. Um, that, that, that's very important and I thought, I've often found that that because I'm quite spiritual uh, if you walk in woodland and, and in, it was somewhere like a big park with a lot of you know trees and there's a good vibration there and it's a kind of lifts your spirits and I found that yeah, walking out where there's a you know a nature uh, without headphones on listening to music you can just listen to the birds and the you know the birds and the bees flying about it's it's just nice it's just nice to get back to nature um, now we, so, we, I was going to say, we must of course talk a little bit about Cold Feet because obviously it's such yeah. a hit, and it's it's also a great program if people are stuck indoors to uh, to binge on because it is a fantastic series um, to watch. I mean, you must have had such a great time doing so many great stories uh, on that show. Well, I think I was shocked that it was such a success when we came back, but it had quality stamped on it. So we, it was a long time coming back because we had to do it properly, and we did do it properly, and it paid dividends. So we we it, we, we got it back. Um, bit of uh, I mean, I think the only place you can watch it now from scratch, it Brickbox own it now. So if you subscribe to that, you get, it's funny though, there's a subscription set up. It says, welcome to Brickbox. And, I, and I'm on my emails and I went, oh, I didn't do that. So I asked the kids and they went, no. And I thought, well, it, cause I'm on it. Do I get it for now? You know, oh, maybe. <laughs> do, I, do I get a free account? Anyway, I've tried logging in. I can't. So, but if you want to watch the whole of cold feet, if you haven't watched it from the beginning, it's on there. And you can see um, the whole story. Now, the, regarding the story of it so far, um, it was left open-ended. And the plan was, pre-lockdown, to have done a summer, what I would call Carry On Abroad, was to do a 90-minute special abroad. However, due to unforeseen circumstances and various issues, we couldn't do it. But we wouldn't have been able to do it anyway. So hopefully within this time, there might have been a chance to kind of recoup get the writers together maybe on zoom and, 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 and bash it out so yeah um it's not finished the show is definitely not cancelled it's uh, uh but it's just it's in um it's being rested for now and then it'll be back because i mean the great thing with it as i say is it it, it tackled so many different subjects and I mean obviously the big one for you was the mental health storyline which um you know male suicide and it was so powerful just to, I mean I mean I, I think you know I'm sure many people have mentioned this to you the clip where you were at the top of the cliff and oh my god that episode's full on it's full on two things about the episode I'm a professional drummer I've been playing 38 years so they said was that you on the drums and I went well yeah you can see really but there's some fancy bits maybe taken from over the shoulder that could be a double no, it's all me because I play properly. And is it was that you on top of that cliff? Was it CGI? No, it was me on the edge of that quarry. It was near Bolton. But I have a line clipped in that's, that's painted out in post. But I, I'm quite... Uh, a few years ago, I went to New Zealand with Jack Osborne, did Adrenaline Junkie and that kind of stuff. Heights one wasn't great, but I kind of conquered it out there. So I'm pretty fearless now. So the stuntman went, oh, no, ooh, it's quite... Bad, isn't it? So we just uh, we went back at lunchtime a bit earlier and just sat on the, my stunt double and just sat on the edge chatting. And I, he said, "Do you think you'll do it?" And I went, "Yeah, it'll be fine." And I just did it all. Um, also, when I went in the <laughs> when I went in the canal, oh god! I mean, I missed. I, I, it's Pete the stuntman, really. I don't <laughs> think the others kind of do any kind of. I love it though. I like to get involved. I'd love to do an action series where I can, you know, when I'm when this ring fit adventure thing, uh, I come out, I emerge like some ripped butterfly from maybe, maybe the future James Bond. Well, I'm too short, too fat, too northern. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old now. Roger was getting on a bit when he did View to a Kill. I think he started Bond when he was 46. I'm 51 now. He's probably my. He was probably my age when he did. Let's have a look. Because I'm a big Bond fan. Let's have a look. Let's see. How old was Rod? <laughs> How old was Roger Moore when he did View to a Kill, which is his last Bond film? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. Fifty-seven. Wow. There you go. Oh well, you might be all right. I've yeah. got another six years in go, me. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> see, I've got six years of a potential Bond career in me. Ah <laughs> oh, well, 
That's, that's made my day now. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> I can fantasise all day. <laughs> oh, now, I just want to say it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I could carry on for, forever. Um, well, thanks for having me on. That's all I right. hope J- the listeners appreciate it. Yeah, I was just going to say before we go, is there any messages you'd like to give to anyone listening in the hospital? I'd just like to say stay strong, stay positive, um, and uh, stay happy, really. Um, it's kind of like the mind controls the body. And if you're, a, I think, in your, if, you, if you are in a happy state of mind and a positive state of mind, I think the body follows. Uh, I've learned that over the years that, you know, find a happy place in your head and you'll find a happy place in the rest of your body. So uh, I hope you have a lovely day. Perfect. Now, I just want to say thanks again for your time. Um, of thank course, you. Keep, keep safe. And yeah, thank you for, for you joining too. me. You too. All the best. Take care, mate.